Hello, it's Sunday 17, and the readings are challenging and linked, it seems, to post the host. They explore the attitude of holy people towards others, meanness and generosity, power and unselfish living. Elisha's first thought with the food was to be generous, and his servant's response was, but there won't be enough. Elisha's wisdom, there'll be leftovers. In Ephesians, the first thought is for Christians to be selfless, gentle and patient, to be one with all people. And Jesus' first thought is for others. He wants to find enough food to give to everyone. And finding some, he wants it all shared out. Until in the end, there's more than there ever had been at the beginning in the small boy's hamper. The people's response, astonished, is to want to make him a king. Jesus' wisdom, to escape. The holy dynamic is clear. Unselfish, community living, in which all is shared and no one vaunts themselves or allows themselves to be vaunted over another. The unholy dynamic is also clear. Selfish, individual living, in which people grab for themselves without much or any thought for others. And this idea of some having much while others have little, translated also into authority, so that kings and queens, rulers, are appointed. It was thus that organised religion swallowed and mangled the Jesus phenomena. If you have a real holy guy turn up who wants to break open the treasure chests and whose sights are for everyone's good, then the only thing you can do is crucify him and steal his message. They couldn't make him king while he was alive because he'd escaped. So they did after his death. King Jesus, enthroned on the golden altar cloths of the church, rendered powerless to protest at the inanities of denominational Christianity perpetrated in his name. Stony-faced religious power brokers trying to dress up their compromises made for media land. The established church of this nation refusing to accept homosexuality, yet accepting clerics who have celebrated their union with a civil partnership on the basis that they will remain chaste. It's a nonsense. The established church refusing to accept sex outside of marriage, yet this week encouraging clergy to provide marriage and baptism in one service. Inconsistency and contradiction bedevil Anglicanism, because at its heart it's a political dynasty whose policies are born so often out of expediency and economic necessity. I, as a lowly curate, was offering baptism within the marriage service back in 1984. In 1994, freed from the stranglehold of canon law, I was able to offer the sacrament of marriage, both to homosexuals and to heterosexuals. Someone this week held up a, a broadsheet picturing the Archbishop of Canterbury beside a woman priest, both holding chalices up high. And the person commented, look at this charade, not a ray of light to be seen. I looked over, and while I respect Rowan Williams, I could understand what the critic meant. The king and queen of the church held King Jesus high, with sombre faces and stern gates, inviting a select few to come with bowed heads to receive. Yuck, it looked mean and powerful. A far cry, from a windy hillside, where Jesus, one of the crowd, one among sinners, was concerned that everyone was fed, and then slipped away, lest they made a big deal of him and what he'd done, and missed the point entirely. So enough, please, of mean church. Let's make it generous church. Enough of King Jesus. Let's make him friend Jesus. Enough of sombre faces. Let's chat and laugh at ease. Enough of solemn rites. Let's party. Jesus is not obsessed with whether a person has been baptised or confirmed. He has no bias over whether a person is a Methodist or a Catholic. If a Muslim or a Christian is presented, they stand on equal ground. Those who wish to give advantage to the badge wearers and the bearers of sacramental certificates are barking up the wrong tree. God is the God of all people. Christ is the Christ of all people. The Holy Spirit is at work throughout the world and its peoples. I've just come home from baptising a child near Basingstoke. I listened to Question Time on Radio 4, broadcast from a Methodist church. And some of the churches, great and good, frowned on these new Anglican hatch and match services, by which they described them. Marriage is all important, one man opined. How can the church uphold its sanctity and protect children within, while bringing on services which seem to countenance sex before marriage? 
In contrast, Peter Tatchell seemed to speak for Christ when he suggested that transient social and legal structures of relationship were somewhat irrelevant. What mattered was how to protect and resource the love that two people shared and the children that that love had brought into the world. The representatives of the church sounded mean again, powerful and full of judgment, contrasted with Peter Tatchell's more enlightened and compassionate view. So Christians, let's be shaken up this week. Let's smile and share and give away our power. Let's step down from our thrones and escape the pandering attitudes whereby others would denude themselves of dignity by giving us more than is ours. Astonish others with your kindness, your open-heartedness, your welcome, your desire to see everyone, treat everyone and give to everyone as your equal. As the news page on Post the Host's, Post the Host's website detailing the retired vicar, who when he saw another tug the arms down of their friend at a communion rail because they weren't part of the church and hadn't been confirmed, raised them up again and gave the person communion. Be bold. Let's break new ground. Because what the religious establishment didn't bargain for is that the dead Jesus they made king. He's alive and well as one who serves on planet Earth.